Welcome to this talk about anomalous quantum oscillations. My name is Valentin Lieb, and I will present today a research project where we have studied non lipschitz kosovich quantum oscillations in a heterostructure of graphene on, a prop on alpha ruthenium trichloride. First of all, it is important to understand why such heterostructures have been studied in the first place. And as the title already su su suggests, it has something to do with quantum spin liquids. So let me remind you that a quantum spin liquid is a certain state of matter which evades magnetic ordering even down to lowest temperatures. And usually quantum spin, li spin liquids feature a very high degree of entanglement. And this high degree of entanglement leads to various exciting phenomena, including anions, fractionalized excitations, fraction fractionalized statistics, and non-local excitations, and so on. And one of the most celebrated quantum spin liquid models is the Kitaev Honeycomb model, which is quite interesting because it's exactly solvable. The Kitaev Honeycomb model lives on a honeycomb lattice where the spins are associated with the vertices of the lattice. And in the honeycomb lattice, we have three inequivalent bond directions, x, let's call them x, y, and z. And the spins interact via an Ising-like direction in every bond direction. And the, this model has two types of excitations, Majorana excitations and uh, gapped flux excitations, which will, will not be further, of further importance for this talk. Um, but the fractionalized Majorana excitations will be. And another reason why this model has been studied widely in the last years is that there have been various candidate materials discovered, which can, which would be a physical realization of this Kitaev model, and all these models have a strong spin orbit coupling, and coupling, and so they can realize actually this model. And one of them, one material I would like to introduce today is alpha ruthenium trichloride. There is, however, however, a problem associated with bulk alpha ruthenium trichloride, that is, it orders anti-ferromagnetically anti at low temperatures. So this indicates that the Kitaev term is not the strongest term in this Hamiltonian. And therefore, several ways have been discussed to strengthen the Kitaev term in alpha ruthenium trichloride to actually see that it will be a quantum spin liquid. And these um, different ways include the application of a magnetic field or pressure, intercalation, or the construction also of heterostructures. And especially the last point will be um, today's most interesting point for, for this talk. And what we would like to focus on is a heterostructure out of alpha ruthenium trichloride and graphene. And this is schematically depicted in this uh, image here on the left hand side, where you can see the graphene lattice as, as gray in the back, and then on top of it, the uh, ruthenium trichloride, and you can see the honeycomb lattice in blue, and there the spins are, are sitting. And the first thing which is clearly obvious is that these two lattices are in commensurate, and therefore the alpha ruthenium trichloride layer gets strained. And this increases indeed the Kitaev interaction. So there is strong reason to believe that the alpha ruthenium trichloride layer in this heterostructure is indeed described by the Kitaev honeycomb model. Then people have studied this heterostructure with density functional theory and com computed the band, band structure. And what you can see from this is that it is a mix of the graphene band structure and the, uh, the excitations of the guitar, of the honeycomb of the guitar honeycomb model, and this large Dirac cone, you, which you can see here, is the Dirac cone of graphene, which is obviously shifted by around 0 0.6 electron volts, and hence it has been concluded that the graphene layer becomes hold up in this heterostructure, and these effectively flat bands around the Fermi energy are the bands of the Kitaev layer, which have a 
much smaller bandwidth and therefore appear as effectively flat in this in this band structure here. And you can see that there are several bands. This is just due to the fact that the, that the unit cell has to be chosen larger such that such that um, we get multiple bands uh, here. And this charge transfer here in the hetero structure has also been has, has also been seen by other groups and is really an important part of this hetero structure. And as already said earlier, it's possible to construct these heterostructures also experimentally to just put a single layer of graphene on top of um, a few layers or even a single layer of alpha retaining trichloride. And it's then possible to calculate, for example, transport properties of the graphene electrons and see if they change with respect to clean or single layer graphene. So, and this has been done. Um, especially magnetotransport has been studied. And what do you see? You see perfect, as you see just normal quantum oscillations. But if you look a little bit closer, you see that these are not normal quantum oscillations, but the amplitude is different to what we would normally expect. So normally we would expect a monotonously decrease of, of the amplitude of temperature. But what we see is a clear maximum, or not, but, not what we see, but what they have seen is a clear maximum at at around 7 Kelvin. And this is a clear indicator that um, something beyond non lichitz kosovich is going on here. And with this discovery, two main questions um, have, arri have arised. So first of all, is this non-LK behavior related to the quantum spin liquid behavior of the alpha ruthenium trichloride layer? And how can we describe this non-LK quantum oscillations in this material. And hopefully um, these two, or what, what, what's the hope uh, that these two questions are related to each other. And if, if, if you answer one of this question, also the other one will be answered. So um, now that's where we started our um, research. So our idea was to construct a minimal model, which is able to describe the heterostructure and so explain what's going on there with the quantum oscillations. And for this, we have chosen as a minimal model, the Kitaev condo model, which consists out of three terms. So the first term here is just the usual Kitaev Honeycomb term, as, as I introduced it earlier. The second term is a simple hopping Hamiltonian, um, which is an effective description for graphene. And the last term, which is actually the key part here, is a contour interaction between the spins of the Kitaev layer, SI alpha, and the spins of the graphene electrons, which interact. And such models have already been, or not such models, but exactly this model has already studied, has already been studied previously by Parton Minfield theory. And what has been found is a very rich phase diagram, as you can see it here at the bottom. And it has very interesting phases. So for example, this recognized Fermi liquid phase and also various phases corresponding to superconducting phases. And um, another part of the phase diagram is this heavy Fermi liquid phase. And what's actually interesting for the heterostructure is this heavy Fermi liquid phase. So all these fancy phases down here don't play a role for that. So what we are looking for in the following is an effective low energy or low temperature description, how you want it, um, of the heavy Fermi liquid phase in here. And if you do this part on mean field theory, what's really practical that in this heavy Fermi liquid phase, the symmetries of the, uh, of the mean fields are very simple. So it's quite easy to compute an effective Hamiltonian or an effective description for the heavy Fermi liquid phase, and it will just result in a simple four-band Hamiltonian, um, which we can analyze. So um, on the top part here, what you can see is this is just the low energy description of graphene. So it's just the Dirac cone um, shifted by V from the Fermi energy. So this is the description of graphene where T is the bandwidth of graphene and it's around 2.6 electron volts. And down here, which what looks very similar, is the description of 
the fractionalized excitations of the guitar player. And also they seem very similar. Um, this value K here is much smaller than the value of T. So K is around a few milli electron volts. So we can treat it as effectively flat um, in the following. And the condo interaction now appears as an effective hybridization between the two models. Let me show you um, the band structure, this Hamiltonian, what follows from this Hamiltonian. So we have plotted the band structure of our effective Hamiltonian over um, the band structure of the heterostructure, which has been found with DFT. And you can see that we're able to describe this charge transfer by changing the value of V. And here, this is the large Dirac cone again, and these bands are effectively flat. And what happens in the, in the quantum oscillations, what we would want to see in the following, is that these bands really become, that the dispersion of these bands will not matter for the quantum oscillations, but they can be treated as zero. So let me just comment shortly on the, on the size of magnitude of these different energy scales. So um, this shift V is really large. So it's 600 milli electron volts. It's huge for the huge um, amount of uh, chart uh, of, of deviation to the to this to the origin of the drug corn in graphene. And K is much much smaller than T. This is really important. And also this hybridization here is quite small. The result that we found here, um, or we have derived the result that we found here for this heterostructure, but in fact, it's a much more generic result. So it's actually an effective low energy description for any direct heavy thermal liquid. It's in, in this sense, it's very generic. And also our findings are very generic. So what's really nice about this uh, low energy Hamiltonian up there is that it's possible to ca calculate the Landau levels exactly in an analytic form. And after ca the calculation of the Landau levels, it's possible to calculate the Green's function, to find a temperature Green's function. And then this is due to a theorem proven by Hartnell and Hoffman that the complex poles of the Green's function are connected to the oscillating part of the grand current canonical potential. So we can basically compute um, the quantum oscillations from the Landau levels, which, which, which we can determine exactly for this Hamiltonian. And what we found in the end is a new formula for anomalous quantum oscillations of the magnetization, uh, which consists of two parts, this oscillating part here and the temperature decay here. Let me first comment on the frequency of the oscillations. So the frequency of oscillations, you can already see the V appears again. The frequency account, accounts for the charge, charge transfer, which happens in the heterostructure. So the frequency is associated with the Fermi surface, which is generated by the graphene Dirac cone as if there would be no hybridization, so down here. And we have compared this result of the frequent or the frequency we find experimentally actually perfectly fits to this charge transfer. So if we show um, experimental results and we have fitted this with our theory results, we see that we can perfectly describe the frequency of our quantum oscillations. And the second part, which is actually the key part of, of our result, is this, uh, temp uh, this amplitude uh, here, which it will be non lipschitz kosovich and I will comment on that in the next slide. So this amplitude R of T actually is a quite complex formula, which you can see here on the left-hand side. But for convenience, I've plotted it in this diagram here on the right-hand side in this 3D diagram. So on the x-axis, you can see temperature in units of uh, the, uh, the hybridization scale or the condo coupling. And on the right hand side, you can see the chemical potential deviation in units of the hybridization scale. So I would like to stress that it is a chemical potential deviation because mu should be really seen in this case as the deviation to the effectively flat band at the Fermi energy. And if this deviation is small, we see that we recover a clear maximum at a value set 
by this hybridization scale j, and then the amplitude goes down, down again. And this looks very similar to what we what people have observed experimentally, and also what we have also observed experimentally. And as soon as we turn far enough away from this flat band, we recover the usual lipschitz kosovich behavior again. So here the, on the back, the dashed line is just the usual lipschitz kosovich curve, which decreases monotonically. So in the last step, um, I show some experimental results. So um, this is the amplitude, which is actually exp experiment experimentally me measured. So the dots are the experimental results um, of three different samples. And we have fitted our amplitude we have found right here over on this experimental results for each sample. And overall, we see a very good correspondence between our theory and the experimental results. I have to admit that there are some tiny temperature deviations, uh, that there are some tiny deviations at low temperatures here and in the green curve. Um, but however, I would like to, to stress that if we compare to the best fit with lipschitz kosovich with a lipschitz kosovich theory, that our fits clearly improve over the lipschitz kosovich fits. So the lipschitz kosovich fits are shown here as dashed lines and our curve, our amplitude is the solid line and the best fits with LK are quantitatively obviously worse than our um, fits. So even though it might not be the perfect fit, um, we believe that this theory or this, the experimental results suggest that this theory actually works for this heterostructure. And this correspondence of experimental data and our theory has led us to the following conclusion. So um, formally, we had charge neutral fermions as excitations of the Kitaev layer. And by this effective hybridization with the condo coupling, these charge neutral fermions have acquired charge, the charge of the itinerant hop uh, hopping electrons of graphene. In the end, I would like to underline that even though we have developed this theory for this heterostructure, and we have also done measurements for this heterostructure, our findings are much more generic. They are applicable for any um, Dirac cone which is hybridized with a heavy Fermi liquid. And in the end, I would like to thank all our collaborators. So first of all, Johannes Knolle, whose main idea was it to study this um, this heterostructure in this this form, and who has advised me during this project, then Katarina Buljodov, um, Surabi Mashadi, and Marco Burkhardt, who have constructed and measured the samples in Stuttgart, and Sananda Biswas and Rosa Valenti, who have done the DFT calculations and have a, who have a really profound understanding um, of these heterostructures. So um, thank you for going for this talk with me. I hope you enjoyed it.